I'm here with uh, Jim Thorson from NOAA uh, at ISEC in Seattle. Uh, Jim, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. So you recently, uh, you gave a great talk. Thank you. And uh, you recently got a paper published in MEE. Uh, so congratulations. Thanks. Yeah. So I was just wondering if you could tell us a bit about it. Yeah, so, so my um, collaborator is Malin Pinsky at Rutgers, and then at, uh, Eric Ward, who is at the Northwest Fisheries Science Center just down the hill from where we are at ISEC, um, and myself there too. Um, we're all interested in, in understanding climate impacts, and we have the hope that one of the more easy um, to measure impacts of climate on fishes will be distribution shift. So Malin did some work in, in, in a paper in Science in 2013 where we, where I looked at sort of average shifts in um, fish assemblages in different regions of the U.S. And we wanted to replicate that, but using statistics to dial in on what's the specific distribution shift of individual species instead of just looking at the whole assemblage. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So uh, there's already metrics out there for um, looking at distribution shifts. Yeah. So I guess I was wondering sort of why, why not just go with those? Yeah, so we, we actually, in fisheries, as we often have, we have different opportunistic data sources or, um, you know, decade-long surveys that are interrupted at, at times. And so um, the abundance-weighted average estimator that Malin had used, and which I think a lot of the climate distribution shift papers have used, um, there's a lot of different flavors, but some of those I don't think deal very well with um, shifts, basically, in the, lo after the sampling design. That goes into the data so so you like um catching effort sort of stuff yeah well and specifically the spatial distribution of fishing so it okay. fishing in my case so okay. um you know we had a survey that ran from the 70s to the early 2000s and then another one that ran from the early 2000s onward and yeah. um the average location of the first survey was actually more northward in some years than others and so mm. if you just do this standard abundance weighted average estimator you basically confound distribution shift with shifts in the distribution of sampling. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. So how do you how do you correct for it? Yeah. So um, you know, me, myself and many others are are increasingly interested in Gaussian process models, yeah. um, and you know, essentially the goal is to estimate a, a density function, so the density of each species in the community mm -hmm. um, at any possible location within the domain, mm -hmm. and once you have that that function, you can extract all sorts of statistics from it. So we did, you know, center of gravity, you know, the center latitude or longitude of the population, but also statistics like effective area occupied or um, quantiles the distribution. There's all sorts of measures besides just the standard index of abundance that, mm. you know, we as population ecologists have focused on since the 70s. So yeah, right. yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you're working at NOAA? Yeah. So the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Yep. Um, yeah, we it, it, it's it's um, a big science organization here in the U.S. Um, I'm actually in the stock assessment group, which um, historically, you know, is the population ecology group that manages how a sustainable fishing is. Mm. Um, and I I think that my field of stock assessment. Um, you know, realizes that we have to be making inroads into community ecology and climate impacts. And so um, I've actually gotten a lot of support from my group to do kind of the spatial modeling that hasn't traditionally been part of stock assessment. Yeah, right. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. So do you have a background much in the stats or are you sort of self-taught self or sort of... Uh, a, bit, you... a bit more self-taught, yeah. That I, I have two degrees in fisheries, but I, I actually started out with a philosophy major. And, right. Um, you know, in fisheries, we always deal with these sort of multidisciplinary problems, and so I actually think it suited me pretty well to have a broad, yeah, broad right. background. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, and suddenly you're on Gaussian process models. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, I mean, uh, David and I have overlapping interests with multi-species, Gaussian process models, these factor models, and, yeah. um, I, you know, that's the fun thing about this paper is that I hope to keep using this as I build multi-species models, and Right. We're doing some early work, kind of trying to see if we can do the Robin Hood approach, we call it, you know, steal from the information rich to give to the information poor. Yes. Um, so if we model the whole species, you know, community using a factor model, can we get better estimates of distribution shift for individual species? Yeah, right. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So I was going to ask you what's next, but that's, is that pretty much what your focus is now, sort of thinking multi-species models? Yeah, that's... I and, um, 
it's been fun for me as a population ecologist to figure out what people are doing. Um, yeah, that you know, my my gestalt is that, um, you know, as I talked about in my talk, that you know, meta community theory is increasingly focused on different hypotheses that are spatial, kind of intrinsically spatial, and so um, hopefully we'll have success with spatial temporal community modeling to explain answer old questions. Yeah, right. Yeah, we'll, we'll be watching it closely. Yeah, thanks a lot. So, yeah. So uh, thanks a lot for your time. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.